Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another large ship that utilizes the vector thrust script in order to move thrusters on rotors. This is the Stratos class planetary exploration ship, which is this lovely thing over here. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the Stratos is 3,524 large blocks using the Warfare 2, Decra Block No. 1, Decra Block No. 2 and Sparks of the Future DLC packs. We can see a nice lot of information about it on the Steam Workshop page, the full controls as well as everything on the ship. So we'll give this thing a thumbs up and move all around towards the very front. We'll have a quick look around the outside, we'll have a quick tour of the interior. Now we'll fly on over to the pirate base we saw last time to see how well this can do against it. So at the very front here, this is what we get. Front and centre we've got ourselves a lovely glass bridge to fly this thing around. On the left and right hand side we can see some searchlights and gatling turrets to blast our enemies with and as well light up the darkness. If we were to move onto the side so that's our searchlight and turret set up. Over from this section we've got some lovely very clean black, white and yellow blocks. There is a landing gear to clamp yourselves down on and there is just enough clearance with that connector right there that it should not take damage if you land on a semi-flat surface. Pulling away from that and coming over to this section, this is our first side thruster pod which features one large atmospheric thruster. That atmospheric thruster is connected onto a rotor, which is how the vector thrust script is going to move it forwards and backwards when we activate it. We can also see a couple of ion thrusters, there is a rocket launcher for some manual firepower, and then just below that we can see another landing gear to help land this thing down. We have to come all the way across onto the side of our atmospheric thruster, that is all we get, so we've got green light on this side, and some nice use of our steel blocks adding as a fin. Round and behind our thruster we can see two hydrogen thrusters as well as a couple more ion and onto this section which has got some more lovely clean blocks where we can clearly see an antenna on the top. Coming towards the back a couple of static atmospheric thrusters to help on our left and right and even more great use of our armoured panels just creating those lovely fins at the back. And here is one more large atmospheric thruster once again on a rotor which help move us forwards and backwards. Moving all the way up and looking down, that's how it's been set up. And going along towards the main body, that is our antenna. There's a couple of parachute hatches just in case something goes horribly wrong. And you can see the antenna is connected on via a hinge. So if you want to, you can just raise that all the way up and just stand like it would on a regular building. We also have a ladder access to get in and out of this ship, as well as a button panel which is going to be for that antenna to raise it up and down. Along the main body, a couple of solar panels for some renewable power, some more parachute hatches, some more ion thrusters, then towards the front, even more parachute hatches, and there is a remote control block. And all the way over to this section, that is our bridge. If we were to come back and over to one of our wings and look down, that is our atmospheric thruster and how it's all been housed up. Just clip myself into the blocks. There is our rotor to spin it all the way around. It was to drop down and come underneath, this is what we get excusing all the grass. So there's our thruster, got an air vent to suck an auction from the surrounding area. This section right here is our ramp to get a vehicle in and out. So these plates can be folded down onto the ground with a click of a button from inside the vehicle. Now allow you to drive all the way up, past this hangar bay door and into this part. So there's a button panel to control all of that and this is just the general room we get to fit the vehicle in. Come out of that and continue along the bottom of the vehicle, there's our landing gear, there's some more hydrogen thrusters underneath our wings, there's the bottom of our rocket launchers, here is a connector and over onto this section, this is kind of like a emergency escape route where we can come through this section which will lead through a doorway and it'll be just behind some steps which returns us to the hangar bay. Come out of that and going slightly towards the front there, that is all we get to the front, so there's another searchlight. And that is the very front with a little light below it. And there we go, that is a very brief look around the outside of the Stratos class planetary exploration ship. It looks bloody fantastic with how it's all been set up. It's a very clean, very sleek design for a vector thrust ship and it gets even better when we go on the inside. Should grabbing hold of my character, what we're going to need to do is come from the top and work our way down. I think that's the best way to do this. So we're going to fly all the way up to this part, land down on the solar panels and come over to this section. So this is the bottom panel for the antenna to raise it all the way up. And we'll just let that go up before we go inside. So there we go. It's simply just like a decorative feature to raise it up and down. Doesn't do anything at the end of the day. But there you go if you want to do that. 
And we come down this ladder shaft, which is going to be quite a drop. So here we go. And now we're on the inside. So we're instantly greeted by a single door. So there's no double door for an airlock. But we can now just open that up. Not too sure why my character just grabbed hold of that ladder. But this is now the proper interior. So we've got some reactors. We've got some gyroscopes. We've got a projector in case we need it. Looking up, we've got some cargo containers. But while we're here, we might as well just access this. Come into the control panel and take a look for a refinery. There is a large one. And then for a dissembler, we've got a large one as well. So we can do pretty much everything with this ship. Walking around on these catwalks, we can just take a look around here. We've got some conveyors coming from the ceiling all the way down. Looking up, we've got some hydrogen tanks. And towards the front here, we've got a hydrogen engine. There is a programmable block. There is quite a few on here, but only one of them is set up with the vector thrust script. But we'll come out of that and turn around. We won't go towards this section yet. In fact, I'll just close up the doors for the moment. We'll come out to that at last. We can come past another programmable block. We can head down these steps, which then be to our hangar bay. In the hangar bay, we can see a bunch of modules on the roof. There is a air vent, as well as the cargo containers we just saw. That is our projector. Round towards the back, we've got a camera to see what's going on in the hangar bay. There is our connector to dock up our vehicle. Here's the survival kit, just in case you come in damaged and need to heal yourself. Also, you just die in general and want to respawn on the ship. Here's a sneaky little area for you to cower, in case you're being boarded by an enemy. And here is our button panel to control a few things. So we've got our hang connected to lock and unlock it. We've got our docking connected to turn it on and off. Then got the docking connector to lock and lock that. Then we've got our antenna to show and display it. If we were to come over to the next button panel, what we've got is controls for the hangar bay and the ramp. So pressing the first button, this could be for our hangar bay doors to raise it all the way up. If we were to press number two, this will then be for the ramp, put it all the way down. We just stand here for the moment and let it deploy fully. And there we go, we now walk down onto the ground and we should be able to get a vehicle up quite safely as long as you don't go too fast. I do think this is kind of like a weak point because if you do come up here a little bit fast or if your vehicle is quite low to the ground, you could easily damage these. But then again, it's easy to replace because these plates are dirt cheap. Over to the button panel, number three is then going to be for a hanger to pressurize and then to depressurize. For the moment, we just close them up and continue around the ship. So coming over to this section, this is what we saw earlier, which I dubbed the emergency escape area. So opening up the doorway, we're then instantly greeted by a ladder shaft that will just drop us down underneath the ship. And there we go, we do have another button panel, which is going to be to control the connector sitting right there. So we can turn that on and off like that. There we go. And we can lock and unlock it. Now just come jetpack all the way up through the section. We need to duck down and pass these steps. There we are. Walk all the way up. And now we can come through these doors. Opening up this is going to come to a very small living area. On the left hand side, we've got some lockers. Then we've got a toilet. Over on this side, we then got our kitchen bay and then a shower. Turning around and opening up this doorway, we're now heading towards our very fancy bridge. But first, we've got a couple of beds for you to sleep on. Looking up, that's all we get in this part. Then going towards the front, on our left, we've got our projector table. On our right, another locker. And then we've got a bunch of seats. So we've got a regular passenger seat in the middle. And on the left and right hand side, we've got flight seats, which are set up to control the turrets. So we can manually take control over this if we need to. And we do have a remote control block just in case we need to fly this vehicle in the event the main cockpit got destroyed. Bring out this one and then coming over to the main cockpit, these are the controls we get. Pressing number one is going to activate the vector thrust system where we're going to be able to move this around. So we move it forwards, we move it backwards, but we're not going to get any kind of thrust until we press number two, which is going to be the jetpack feature from the script. So pressing that, we now just undo the parking brake and we lift off from the ground and fly this thing around. Number three is going to be for our hydrogen thrusters underneath the chip to turn them on and off in case we need it. Number four is going to be for our forward hydrogen thrusters. Number five and number six is for our hydrogen thruster override. Number seven is for our ion thrusters. Number eight is for our hover feature. By pressing that, we disable our gyroscopes, so now we can't really move this thing around, and we just sit in place. Number nine is then for our camera, which is going to be sitting below our ship, so we can easily land this down to the ground without damaging it. Now on tap number 2, 3 and 4, we've got nothing else, so we can come out of this and fly this thing around. Pressing number 8 once again to disable the gyroscope. Now fly this thing forwards. If I want to, I can activate those thrusters. We can even throw on the ion thrusters for good measure. And this is what we get. So it's not going to be very fast, but that's typical for a vector thrust ship. We're going to move forwards like so, and we want to stop. Vector thrust will then come in handy and stop us a lot quicker. That's very nice to see. Moving left. This is all we get thanks to those atmospheric thrusters on the side. Then moving right. There we go. Very, very slow with that. 
Moving up, which should be pretty damn good thanks to all of those atmospheric thrusters and the hydrogen thrusters, the moving down is going to be gravity based, and that's all we're going to get. Wheeling my mouse around, so I've got to be very careful with this because you never know when it might tip over with this script. But this is what we get it's a very meaty, very heavy controls. You're not going to be doing any kind of fancy maneuvering with this, it's just going to be a straight fly and hope your turrets can do their best. Which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to pray that the turrets can disable that base before we get blown to pieces. So we're going to get nice and low, we're going to get the camera out like so, hide the HUDs, and off we go. So yes, at the end of the day, it's a bloody fantastic looking ship. I absolutely love the clean design, and I am a sucker for the vector thrust ship system. I love how the thrusters can just move backwards and forwards on a rotor, and from the speed we're going, it looks like we're just going to slam straight into it, which wasn't my intention. But there goes half the ship, and the turrets are just going to start blasting it. Well, we can now come into here, and hopefully this will be okay to use. We're going to take control of it, and there we go. We now fly this thing around. We're going to have a bit of a dodgy experience because we are missing one atmospheric thruster on the left-hand side. As you can see, that is doing its best to try and, well, turn itself around, and we can see a few pings from the enemy Gatling gun. Now I'm just going to do my best to try and rotate this around. It might be a bit hard. It is fighting quite hard to tip itself over. Doing my best here, but it looks like we are going to come crashing down to the ground. And there's not really too much I can do. But yes, as I was saying before, I got rudely interrupted by crashing into that. It's a bloody fantastic looking ship. Very sleek, very clean design. And it's got everything you need to survive in survival mode. So there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.